Hey, Jalen, um, it, it seems like every week you're, you're uh, making more and more strides. Uh, you, you got your first half sack the week before and then uh, get your first solo sack uh, this week. How did that feel? Um, uh, and having it come against Tom Brady, which you mentioned uh, previously, it's a guy that's been playing as, as long as you've been alive pretty much. Uh, I mean, it's funny that you ask that because people keep asking me, you know, what it felt like to sack Tom Brady. And, you know, I said it before the game, you know, your opponents are kind of nameless and faceless. So honestly, to me, it didn't really feel like anything more than just a sack. But, you know, frankly, uh, it's just not we're not getting it done on defense. And so me getting a sack in the game doesn't really mean too much in the grand scheme of things. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I just think we need to keep improving. I need to keep improving. Uh, and what I'm doing, my technique, my assignments, uh, and we definitely need to keep improving as a defense. Nick, Channel 7. Hey, Jalen, just want to get your thoughts on, on the, the, the trip to London. Have you been overseas before? You're, what are your, what's your excitement level you know, as a player? Does it, you know, with, obviously there's a lot of travel involved, the long flight. Are you looking forward to the trip? Are you kind of dreading the, the flight? Just what are your thoughts on the, on the game itself, on the trip coming, yeah. Up, trip coming yeah, up? Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. So my uh, my aunt, Shawnee, was stationed out in uh, Germany. Uh, she was in the Army. She was in the band in the Army. And so my sister and I, when I was probably, you know, 11, 12 years old, flew out to Germany. And we did like a kind of a trans-Euro trip where we went from like Netherlands to, you know, uh, Belgium, Luxembourg, Austria, France. So I've actually never been to the UK, but I've always wanted to. Uh, so I'm super excited. I love traveling. So. Uh, you know, I think we're like an hour away from London, so it's not like we get to do a bunch of touristy things, which would have been cool. But uh, I'm definitely excited to go, uh, and it'll, it'll be fun. David Lang. So you mentioned that you wanted to sort of pick things up, you know, collectively on defense to to get more pressure. So what does it take for a defense to get more rush? Is it individual guys winning their matchup? Is it scheme? How do you think you guys can more effectively put pressure on this week? that can lead to a win? Uh, yeah, I think most importantly, we got to stop the run uh, on early downs. You know, we got to stop leaky yardage and that way we can get to those, get back on track and passing scenarios. Uh, and then once we do have those opportunities, just just about, you know, coordinating the rush between the ends and the tackles uh, and then just like getting everything uh, how it's supposed to be. So uh, like I said, we just keep working to, to come together as a group uh, and keep improving on what we're doing uh, and just, you know, keep it pushing. David Fronis. Hey, Jalen. Uh, going back to a training camp and then even some of the uh, the game weeks, uh, in the media viewing portion of practice, sometimes we notice that um, you are, are working alone with a couple of coaches uh, during position groups. Is there something specific uh, you guys work on in those instances, or is it as simple as you're kind of a hybrid edge defender, so it's not like you're only outside linebacker, only defensive end? You're kind of like in a position of your own? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say that necessarily because uh, we got guys who do multiple things. But for me, just working with the coaches individually, uh, you know, I'm a young guy. I haven't had any experience in the league. And so for me, uh, you know, it's really essential for me to get my techniques and fundamentals down because if I don't have those and I can't do anything. Uh, and so I've made sure to, you know, work extra with the coaches and they've done a great job of making sure that they're on me constantly to just try to hone in and hone in. You know, it takes you know, a million reps or something to, or I forgot, there's like well, 100,000 reps, something like that to, to perfect it. And so uh, for me, I'm just getting started really uh, and just trying to hone in on my craft. Nick, Channel 7. Hey, Jalen, I got one more question for you to kind of about about University of Miami. It's obviously with the news that Tyler Van Dyke's going to be the starting quarterback. He spent a year with him. I just wanted to get your thoughts on Tyler after spending the year with him, you know, and what were your impressions of him after after spending the year with him? Yeah, TVD is awesome, man. Uh, he, he's a great kid uh, and he's hungry and very poised. Like I remember when he came in last year, he seemed like he was older than his years. Um, and so I think, you know, he, he last game he, he did pretty well and uh, kind of got into the flow of things. So I can only expect him to to go up from there and keep getting better. Um, so I think that the Canes are definitely in good hands with TVD. David Lang. So Jalen, I know I found it very interesting that you said that getting your first sack your first full sack on Tom Brady, you're not thinking about the opponent, but it's also Tom Brady. <laughs> Do you think this is something where, like, I understand right now you're in the middle of the season and, you know, but do you think 20, 25 years from now, you're going to look back and I got the GOAT. My first sack was against Tom Brady. Oh, trust me. I got the game ball from equipment afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I mean, it's, 
I guess the more important thing here is us improving as a team and as a defense. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it's definitely something you tell your your uh, grandkids. You know, I've been jersey swapping every week, uh, so I have this vision when I'm older and have my you know bigger house and I got my little man cave. I'm gonna have all the jerseys hung up, like all the collections I have, and you know that that ball will definitely be a staple in the collection. So, how? I got to follow up by asking you more about the jersey swapping. Uh, tell me some of the guys you have so far. And if you had your choice of, say, two or three guys in the NFL who I could hand deliver to you right now, what jerseys would they be? Yeah, so obviously, uh, let's see, first week, I didn't do anybody. I don't know anybody on the Patriots. But then uh, Greg against the Bills, I, I had to get his jersey. Uh, Colton Miller on the, against the Raiders. I played with him at UCLA, so I got his jersey. Um, uh, Bobby Okereke at the, on the Colts. He uh, hosted me on my first official visit to Stanford, so I got his jersey. Uh, and then last week, I got KJ Britt, uh, who I was at like the opening and the rivals camps and stuff with. Uh, and then two guys I really want, uh, Vaughn Miller, um, just because he's a guy who I've looked up to for a long time. We've actually had a couple back and forth on Instagram and stuff. So that would be really cool to get his jersey. Uh, and then I'd say, you know, probably somebody like J.J. Watt or something, you know, one of, one of these elite DMs that you know, I've been watching since I was a kid. That would be really cool to get their jersey. That's a good lineup. Thanks. Not bad, huh? <laughs> Anybody else have a question for Jalen? Marcel? Yeah, I mean, sticking to the the Canes angle, you mentioned swapping with Greg. Uh, did you get a chance to watch what he was able to do on Sunday night? Oh, yeah. Well, I was watching it live when he got that. We, and I was with uh, uh, GB and, um, and uh, Nesta Silvera, so uh, we were going crazy when we saw that. That was awesome. That's it, man. You guys just kind of – you're really navigating this this – first year of the league together from afar though how, how often do you guys keep in touch how much do you you talk about what you're going through and and whatnot uh you know we, we talk now and then uh you know Greg and I didn't play together so we were never like we didn't have that bond like we weren't ever super close but we just have a mutual respect for each other uh and you know it's I definitely tap in with him to see how he's going you know Quincy Quincy Roche is someone who I obviously was really close to uh because we you know got to play together and so he's someone who I talk to basically every week and you know, just see how things are going up there. And, you know, he asked the same thing. So, uh, you know, I love keeping tabs on on the guys that I've played with. And, you know, I just want to see everybody have great success. Gotcha. I guess that makes sense. He, the year away, I guess he wasn't really allowed to be, like, at the facility, right? Yeah, that's still my dog, though. That's still my dog. Gotcha. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. No doubt.